Welcome to the Locally Led Conservation 2 online training series. I'm Donna Ray Shepherd, president of Leadership Tools Consulting and one of the producers of this series. This segment focuses on new employees and or current employees who've assumed new roles. Wherever you're coming from, the goal would be to make this education applicable back to where you work and live. Hello, I am Keith Klobeck, the Assistant State Conservationist for Programs with Minnesota NRCS, and I want to thank you for listening to this training video today. This training in the Local Ed Conservation 2 training series were brought to you by the following partners, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Natural Resource Conservation Services of Minnesota, the Minnesota Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts, Leadership Tools, and the University of Minnesota Extension. The purpose and goals of this training series include building an awareness of the process and intended outcomes for local input, influences, and direction and funding of conservation, an increase for your understanding and use of resources and tools related to local led conservation, and enhancing the sense of satisfaction with local working groups of NRCS, soil and water conservation districts, and local stakeholders, including landowners and partners. The specific training topics in the series were developed based on a survey of SWCD staff and supervisors and NRCS staff and the identified needs. This gateway to the training series really focuses on um, an introduction to the locally led and local working groups targeted towards new staff or staff who have new roles that require more involvement in these processes as Donna Ray said in the opening. It's a gateway or stepping stone to get you started. The rest of the series is a more in-depth look at the purposes, functions, processes, and tools that make your local led conservation efforts better, regardless if you have in-person meetings or virtual meetings. There are tips and ideas from a variety of conservation partners, producers, and staff that share their knowledge and experience to help you in your locally led efforts. What is the local led process? This process includes several steps. It is a series of events involving your local natural resource partners and community stakeholders working together to identify local needs and issues, prioritizing those needs and then developing recommendations and processes to improve them and implement the actions identified. The local ed process is based on the principle that local stakeholders are the ones best at identifying local resource issues and needs and working the best locally to address them. The process is led by local NRCS and SWCD staff, but should involve many others, including other agencies, organizations, businesses, and individuals in the local community that have an interest in the natural resource management and familiar with local and are familiar with local resource needs and activities. Local ed representatives should reflect the diversity of their local community, it needs to be a representation of the residents, landowners, and land operators of their local area. What is the local working group process? So local working groups are key part to the locally led process. They're subcommittees of the state technical advisory committee that provide recommendations to USDA. Local working group membership should be diverse and focus on agricultural interest and natural resource issues existing in the local community. Membership should include agricultural producers representing the variety of crops, livestock, non-industrial private forest lands, representation, representatives of agriculture and environmental organizations, and representatives of governmental agencies that also carry out agriculture and natural resource conservation programs and activities. This would include other state, local, federal, and tribal governments. Local working group meet, groups meet at least once a year to have an open discussion among, amongst members. Discussion focuses on identifying local resource concern priorities and needs, along with the opportunities and recommendations for change to program delivery and addressing natural resource concerns. These recommendations are recorded. They're then submitted through the State Technical Advisory Committee, which results in recommendations to the NRCS State Conservationist, along with other USDA agencies that directly impact conservation delivery. Oh. My name is Leanne Buck, and I serve as the Executive Director for the Minnesota Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts. 
One of the things we wanted to talk about is why is this training and convening of the local working group done in partnership? It's one piece of the work we do annually based on our federal guidance, and it is part of our NRCS and SWC DNA. The federal policy includes a role for soil and water conservation districts. Soil and water conservation districts and USDA's Natural Resource Conservation Service have a long history of working together. The locally led conservation is based on the principles that people make the best decisions for their own communities. And this was recognized more than 80 years ago when USDA attorneys drafted conservation district statutory language that not only provided a process to establish the conservation district, but also their local citizen board members. The local district role is a cornerstone to assist with bridging the federal conservation programs with local leaders and the connections to other state and local conservation efforts. So today's soil and water conservation districts continue this longstanding tradition based on connecting local, state, and federal efforts to meet the resource needs of the local landowners. The local working group process involves both NRCS and conservation districts, and we together are key partners for our locally led conservation efforts. The working groups are convened each year to discuss and finalize those local recommendations that ultimately will not only be used locally, but are also forwarded to the NRCS via the state technical committee for review and considerations. The suggestions and comments from the local working groups help shape the future of conservation decisions, both at the local level and for the state technical committee and how those funds are utilized and those resource concerns are addressed at a statewide level. So today, again, soil and water districts have an important role with the local working group process. Specifically, it is the responsibility of the conservation districts to develop the conservation needs assessment, assemble the USDA local working group and conduct the meetings, set the agenda and facilitate the dialogue and work with the local NRCS staff to submit the local working group recommendations through the state technical committee to NRCS at a state level. The role of the SWCD and NRCS leading the local working groups have benefits. It not only highlights the SWCD and NRCS leadership role at the local level, but the local working group process also continues to build trust within the community. It provides a check-in with the citizens and interested parties by providing a transparent process on identifying resource concerns. It is also an opportunity to share previous NRCS and SWCD conservation milestones in your district. It's a way to showcase what you have done and what you are doing and what you plan to do. It is also an opportunity to utilize other comprehensive watershed and natural resource management planning efforts to leverage local, state, and federal efforts to address landowner and resource needs. Thank you, Leanne, for covering those roles. What is the role of NRCS in this process? So the role of NRCS staff is going to vary based on your position. It is the NRCS designated conservationist or DC with the responsibility to participate and help facilitate the locally led process, including the following. Performing the responsibilities of the conservation district where there is not a conservation district present or in the case that the conservation district chooses not to participate. They also are to encourage and assist other agencies and members for participation in the process, to help identify program priorities and resources available, support and advise local working groups on technical issues, program policies and procedures, and ensure that populations are provided the opportunity to comment and access government programs. They are also to analyze outcomes and provide reports on program outcomes and impacts, give strong consideration to local working group recommendations on NRCS programs, initiatives, and activities, and ensure that recommendations, when adopted, address natural resource concerns. Other NRCS staff can help support the process also. They can participate in the local working group sessions, help develop alternatives and recommendations, and identify local needs and resource issues all year long. Members of this process bring the experience and local input along with firsthand experience and success 
um, to the needs of this process. Everyone plays an important part in making this process a success. A big part of this local ed process is hearing from the local community on understanding their priorities and needs. This local connection to resources, the soil, the water, air, plants, and animals is what makes this process so valuable. Understanding and sharing the reasons why someone values their local resources is key to understanding outcomes and key to delivering successful local conservation activities. All right, thank you, Keith. The rest of the training series is delivered in four different training recordings, training modules, each with a specific set of goals and purposes. These recorded sessions are available for viewing as you're ready to take the next steps in your locally led journey. Session one is about making local working groups matter and about the role of local input and state and federal direction and funding and how its significance matters. A couple of the specific topics covered include why local involvement matters, how local working groups impact local conservation, um, some small break breakout discussion. You don't get to hear the discussion, but the questions might be worth considering like how, how you can demonstrate that your local government unit is open to input and fairly serving constituents. So there's also a section on public participation methods that work well and the intent and process for 2022 in the local working group process. Session two was making local working groups informed. It focused on how to use key points from scientific data, existing plans, and partners to inform the local working group process and create a local conservation action plan. Some of the specific topics covered in this session include utilizing a natural resource inventory, aligning one watershed, one plan planning, SWCD comprehensive and other plans, sharing technical findings and reports with the public and the local working groups, there was a small group discussion focused on how to communicate scientific information as part of planning conservation uh, conversations about conservation, a tongue twister. Develop a conservation needs assessment was another topic covered and creating a conservation action plan. Thank you, Keith. And the third module that we had was making local working groups meaningful. And the focus of that session was on what are the ways to engage people to foster useful input and enhance our ongoing relationships? And so the dialogue that was covered at that training session was including involving the public, the key stakeholders and partners. We had small group discussions on how and when do I connect purposefully with underserved groups and individuals? Who typically influences priority directions and funding flows for conservation in my area? And also questions related to what tips can I offer to expand who is involved in ways to invite conservation efforts. We also touched on seeking input is worth the effort, building consensus, and also how to make group decisions. And the fourth and final module was making your local working group customized, how to take the multiple ideas from this training series and make your own locally led conservation efforts even better, even if you go virtual. And a couple of the topics that were included that had come out as high priority in the survey about what staff were interested in is diversifying participation with effective recruiting, hosting an effective local work group meeting online, and how SWCDs and NRCS can work well together for how locally led conservation can make even a higher impact in their community. So from all of us, we'd like to thank you for taking the time and effort to engage in this training series. We hope you found value in today's training and we also hope you enjoy the rest of the series. We value the local conservation partnership with SWCDs and NRCS, and we also value the local led process. And we wanna thank you for being a part of it.